Hello guys, it's Johnny Time and welcome to another smart contract hacking tutorial. Today we're gonna solve the fourth Ethernet challenge which is called Telephone. And not only solve it, we're gonna solve it with Foundry. So you get two birds in one shot. You master smart contract hacking and security while learning Foundry. Isn't it amazing? Now, if you missed the previous video, make sure to check them out because in the first video I explain how to set up the Foundry environment and how all these things works that we have our Foundry local repository and we transact transactions on the Gorelli blockchain to solve the actual uh, solution on the blockchain itself and connect it with our MetaMask wallet. So definitely make sure to check out the rest of the videos on this playlist. I have a full playlist of all the Ethernet solution. And if you like this kind of content, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. So every time I post new tutorials about smart contract hacking, you will see them. Now, without further ado, let's get started with a telephone challenge. So this is the telephone force challenge. And in this challenge, we have only one objective, claim ownership of the contract below to complete this level. And this contract looks pretty simple. It's just a telephone smart contract, Solidity 0.8, address public owner, which is being set to message sender upon construction. This is not going to be our player account, obviously, because this contract is being deployed by the Ethernet Foundry, so the owner is not going to be us. And we have a change owner function, which is public. We can just call it without any modifiers, without any access control. But we have one restriction here. If TX origin does not equal to message sender, only if this is the case, we're going to update the owner to the past owner to the smart contract, which is very, very interesting. Before we see how we can solve this challenge, let's start by setting up our environment in the Foundry local repository. So the first thing I'm going to do is just copy this code of the smart contract, and I'm going to go to my repository, to the VS code. I'm going to create a new file in the source folder, and I will call it telephone telephone.sol. And I'm going to paste here the smart contract. Cool. Now we have the telephone smart contract locally in our local repository. Now let's think how we can pass this challenge. On the surface, it looks very simple. We can just call the change owner, but we won't be able to change the owner if the TX origin will equal message sender because this if statement will not be true. The most important thing to understand here is the difference between message sender and TX origin. The thing is that TX origin through the whole life cycle of the Ethereum transaction stays the same and it's always EOA account, externally owned account. Unlike message sender, which is being changed between smart contract calls. As you know, if you don't know, check out the full smart contract, contract hacking course because this is where we go deep dive into the EVM as well. But if you don't know, every time smart contract calls another smart contract, then the message.sender is being changed to the previous contract that called him. So in our diagram over here, if we have a EO account that sent a transaction to contract A, initially both the message sender and the TX origin will be the EOA account, externally own account or your Ethereum wallet, whatever. But if contract A calls contract B, the TX origin will still stay the same, but the message sender will be changed to contract A. So every time we have a new call, smart contracts can call each other, go on and on and on. The message sender will be the last smart contract who called the current contract and the TX origin will always stay the same because this is the original of the transaction, the one who originated this transaction, which is the EOA accounts, because only EOA accounts can initiate transactions. Now, if this concept is new to you and you want to really take your skills in smart contract hacking and security to the next level, you should definitely check out our full smart contract hacking course, which is going to be taught by me and other guest lectures and include 30 
amazing chapters. Also, you learn about TX origin and about the EVM and about phishing attacks and Oracle manipulations and DAO attacks and manipulation. And every chapter also have hands-on exercises. There are more than 50 hands-on exercises that's going to make sure that you master the skill of smart contract hacking. In addition to that, you're going to receive a certification at the end that will help you to showcase your skills to smart contract security companies out there and increase your chance of landing a job in the industry. And you're going to get also access to the best Web3 security community to meet and engage with other students and other professionals and teachers. You can ask questions in the community. You can communicate and mingle with new people, maybe team up for auditing contests and do so many more amazing things. To get a special limited time discount, check out the link in the description below. Beautiful. Now that we know the difference between TX origin and message sender, it means that we just need to call this function not directly from an EOA account, but from a smart contract. Because if we will have another contract here in the middle, not directly from our Foundry script or EOA account directly to contract B, which is the telephone contract, we need just another contract in the middle that will actually call the change owner function and then the message sender will be different than TX origin. So let's do that. We'll go to the script folder, create a new file and we call it telephone solution.s.sol. And I'm going to copy the previous a solution from the conflict just as a template and we will do a lot of things here first we'll change the conflict to telephone we will import the telephone smart contract instead we are not interested in this player smart contract from the previous challenge we will change the solution name to telephone solution the object here will be telephone we will remove it because we need to get a new instance from the website and here we will change it to telephone instance and we will remove here these two things. We're going to leave here start broadcast and stop broadcast. And again, if you are not familiar about the script file and foundry and how we use all these kind of commands and run, check out the first video in the series where we explain how the repository looks like, what is start broadcast, stop broadca broadcast, and many more things. Now, the next thing I want to do is actually to create a new instance of this level using the Ethernet website. So I will go to the Ethernet website and click here, get new instance, submit the transaction using my MetaMask wallet, open the console over here, wait that the transaction will be mined and I will have a new contract of the instance deployed. We got a new instance. We can now copy its address, go back to our uh, VS code and paste here the instance address. This will be our smart contract that we need to hack. Obviously, it's just the telephone contract deployed on the Gorelli blockchain. The first thing we need to do is create the intermediary contract. We said that we cannot just send a transaction directly here from this file because the way Foundry works, it's not actually going to deploy a new smart contracts because it's a script file. It's just going to run these commands one by one and send them from my configured private key configured EOA account. So we'll ne need to create another intermediary contract. So the message sender and the text origin will be different. So I'll define here a new contract and I will call it intermediary contract. And I will define here the constructor. constructor. Now this constructor will receive two variables. The first one will be the telephone instance because we want to interact with the telephone smart contract. So I will do telephone or just telephone instance, whatever. And the second one is, will be the new owner that we want to set to the telephone smart contract. So it's going to be just address and new owner. Beautiful. Now in the constructor itself, what I can simply do is just do telephone, change owner and just send the new owner. That's basically it. So this intermediate contract is going to call the change owner function with this new owner that will be passed upon construction. Now, in our actual solution smart contract here, telephone solution, we just need to deploy this new uh, intermediary contract and pass the parameters. So I will do new intermediary contract. The parameters that I'm going to pass, the first one is going to be just the telephone instance. This is going to be the first one. And the second one needs to be our EOA account address. So I already have it here configured in my environment folder file. And we already did it in previous challenges because we defined in our end file both the private key and our a player account address, the MetaMask wallet address. So I can basically access it through the VM, VM env address, the environment variable of my 
address. So we are basically deploying this intermediary contract, passing first the telephone instance of the telephone smart contract with the deployed Gorelli chain telephone smart contract and our account address. So he knows which owner we want to set to the telephone smart contract. And that's supposed to be it. And now it's the money time. It's time to run the script and see if it actually works. So first I'm gonna run it locally on a forked Gorelli blockchain. I will just use forge script script telephone solution and that's basically it if you watch the previous challenge you already know what this error means basically because in our script file we have two smart contracts foundry doesn't know which contract to execute so we need to supply here tc parameter target contract so we'll just hit add here dash dash tc and then this telephone solution smart contract name and now it will know which contract to search for the run function and run it and it worked we can see that the simulation completed we can see how much gas it costs cost for us to execute it and now we want to broadcast this transaction this solution script file to the actual gorilla blockchain so i'm gonna add here the broadcast command and click enter and now it will no it doesn't need to compile because it's the same contract we didn't change anything but this time it's not just gonna fork locally the blockchain and simulate it but gonna broadcast it to the main blockchain and now we're waiting for the transaction receipts and it's worked it's we don't know if it's worked but we know that it's done this the transaction successfully was executed and mined and if we go here to our player account on the blockchain we can see the last transaction 18 seconds again ago with contract creation because we just created this intermediary contract that executed this logic and exploited the telephone contract and in order to check if it actually work we need to go here and click submit instance i will open the console log so we can see the transactions running so submit instance submitted transaction through metamask and now we send a transaction we are waiting for it to be mined and it worked guys as you can see we completed the level which means that we were able to change the owner of the telephone smart contract congratulations you did it and if you enjoyed this video make sure to smash the like button subscribe to the channel and watch the other videos in the playlist and obviously learn about smart contract security Thank you so much for learning with me and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.